Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to frost the rest of our dripping honeycomb design. We just have two stencils left so it's going to be nice and quick. First thing that you're going to need is a little bit of icing in your bowl. Just put a little bit on the edge. I'm just going to add a few drops of water at a time until I get it to the right consistency. Remember we want this to be kind of like a thick toothpaste like consistency. Almost like what you would outline your cookie with when you're flooding. Maybe a little bit thicker than that. Just added a few more drops of water. You're going to want the icing to form a peak when you pull up. Kind of curl over at the tip there. And that's when you'll know that your icing is just perfect. We did a lot of troubleshooting with the icing in the previous video, so if you haven't watched that one yet, I suggest you jump over there and watch that one first because we talk a lot about the icing consistency that you need to, to actually frost these designs. All right, now that we have that done, you check your color guide, you'll see that this color falls on the spectrum a lot lower near the bottom where the white is. So we know that we're not really adding a whole ton of black to this yellow color that we're going to be doing next. But we can also see that it is yellow, but it is near that middle line for the orange between the red and yellow. So again, I only use primary colors and then black and pink. Those are the five colors I use when making my colors. So that's what we're going to be learning today. So I have my yellow and my red here. I might add a little dot of black here in a minute. We'll see what this looks like. We get a little bit of yellow. And yellow goes a long way. It's a very vibrant color. So we'll start with that. And if we need to add more later, we can. I never put my food coloring directly into the icing because it's a lot easier to just slowly add it than it is to have to try and fix a color that you accidentally oversaturated. Right, I'm going to add a tiny speck, and you see how tiny that is, a tiny speck of red just to kind of give it that orange color. Mix it really good. And our color is still very light, so I'm going to want to add more of that yellow because this yellow color for the honey is going to be a fairly saturated color. And it looks like we probably are going to need a tiny bit of black, but not much. And the black just helps bring it down from being so vibrant. And if you, like, if you want it to be vibrant, you could stop here and not add any black. But I'm just going to add the tiniest speck of black real quick. So I just add a little bit of black to the side of my bowl there. And when I see the tiniest bit of black, I really mean it. That's even too much, probably. There you go. Teeny tiny speck. Just enough to kind of give some deeper depth to that yellow. Not have it so vibrant. I like that color for a honey color. So we're going to stick with that. And you don't have to be perfectly matched to your color guide. Like the yellow color I have here isn't exact to the yellow color on my color guide. The color guide is just more of like what it's called a guide to just help you figure out kind of the direction to go to get each color. All right, I am going to be using all three frames of the base layer guide to help lift my stencil up. That way I'm not anchoring on the table just because as you build up, with these beginner stencils, it's not as big of a deal, but as you build up your transfer uh, and you're anchoring on that table, you are more likely to, when you push, to have it bend just because it has to curl over the edge of that transfer. So by having the base layer guide underneath, it helps make it so that your stencil is a little bit higher, you're able to anchor a little bit higher. And that lined up, you want about an equal border all the way around. 
just double check that your icing is the right consistency real quick and make sure that it's not too thick. All right. And with this design, there's no way to really trace each one of these shapes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make sure I have enough icing on my, my spatula to start at the top. And I'm letting the weight of my hand and the spatula do all the pressure. I'm not pushing hard. I'm not really trying to get it down in there and, and fill in those spaces. I'm just applying the icing on top. If you find by doing this that you are pushing underneath the stencil on this side, you can go halfway, pull up, and then go halfway again and meet in the middle there. The key to getting those crisp lines at this point is your icing consistency. So again, in the previous video, we did talk a lot about the icing consistency and how to troubleshoot it. So if you have your icing pushing under or you're not getting nice crisp lines, then you can go back to that video and troubleshoot your icing so that you can make it the perfect consistency. Because we shouldn't have anything push underneath this stencil here. Anchor in one corner, and then you're just going to quickly and smoothly peel up from the opposite. Now you can see we have nice crisp lines and none of the icing pushed underneath. I'm going to turn on my fan while I clean up and I'm just going to let this dry for about five minutes. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not shiny anymore, has a nice matte finish, and it's not going to, like if you touch it, it's not going to mess it up. So even if you kind of press on it a little bit, you're not going to see any dents formed in it. It'll be nice and dry. If it's not fully dry, remember when we apply our next layer, if this is still kind of wet or not fully dry all the way through, then you're going to get a lot of icing pulling up as you scrape across. One other thing I forgot to mention, if you look at this stencil, you can see that I've started scraping the actual stencil. So the icing, I started scraping the icing off of this actual stencil. That's how thin these layers are. You don't, you don't want to have a very thick layer because it's not going to dry fully and that's where you start getting your messy edges. So make sure that you scrape all the way down to that plastic to get a nice thin layer. All right, I'm gonna go clean my tools and let this dry and then we'll be back to finish up the last stencil. You can also save this icing. Uh, ideally, you would have saved this brown, but since um, I'm doing this in parts, I did not save the brown from last week, so I'm going to have to remake it. But if you save this icing, and this is, and you don't have the brown icing, then uh, I'll show you how to turn this into the next color that we need. All right, so this is fully dry. I'm touching it, and I'm not having anything stick to my finger. When I lightly press on it, it's not creating a divot in the icing. So I know that it's fully dry. This next part, we are going to make the kind of, it's almost like a light brown. It's barely lighter than what this brown is. Even if you used this same brown color, you could do that as well. If you saved this brown color or you're doing this all in one go, you can, and you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can take this light brown and add just a tiny bit of white icing to it to lighten it up, and that'll be perfect. If you're like me, and it's been a week since you created the base, then you're gonna to wanna to take some of your yellow icing, and I just put it in some saran wrap. I wrap it up to make sure that it stays nice and wet and doesn't dry out. So that's how I kept it nice and, and fresh while this dried. I'm just gonna add that into my bowl right here on the edge. And you can see I have not cleaned my bowl yet. I usually work my way all the way around the bowl before I go clean it. This just saves a little bit of time. I still have my colors here on the side. So if we look at our, our color guide again, you can see that the brown is basically just up towards the black end of the spectrum and a little bit over towards the red. So it's a very similar color, so we're going to be using these same exact colors. I am going to add more red in here. Because we want this to be a deeper color. Oh, and I may have used too much red. We will see. That black.
And you can see how quickly it turns to brown. And that's really all brown is, is just your yellow, red, and black. This is very similar to what we used as our base here, since I added a little bit too much red, but that's okay because now we can add that white. And you'll be able to see what I mean if you had the base color, you could just add some white to it. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna wipe off as much of this as I can and grab a little bit of white. So I have about half and half right now. So I've got my brown and then almost about the same amount of white. And that's usually how I lighten my colors each time is I just add the same amount of fresh white icing to my color. And that usually does the trick. Since I added that fresh icing, this did thicken up quite a bit. So I am gonna add a couple more drops of water. I don't necessarily recommend adding your water and mixing this over your transfer like I'm doing here, just because if that water splashes out onto your transfer, it will eat away at that sugar and kind of mess up your design. But for filming purposes, that's why I'm doing it over my transfer. Normally I do this off to the side. All right, so we're gonna go with that. This is a little bit lighter than what I have on the color guide, but I think it's gonna look good. All right, again, I'm gonna bring in my three frames. Okay, and we want to position this so that none of these are hanging off of the yellow. I'm gonna move them up, there we go. That's about where you want them. And you wanna keep them fairly even distance wise from the edge there, just cause this is a honeycomb and usually the honeycombs are very, very, uh, almost perfect, right? When you look at a honeycomb from a bee, they do a very good job at making everything symmetrical and lined up just right. Right now I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm just going to pull down in the direction of these little pieces here. And again, I'm just letting the weight of my hand and spatula apply that pressure. I'm not really pushing very hard. On these, I am gonna follow the same direction that they're facing and that'll just help not push underneath. And then you can come through with your scraper at about a 45 degree angle and scrape it flat. And I'm gonna make sure that I scrape all the way down to that plastic so you can basically see through and there's not any icing really blocking your view. This also helps when you are frosting multiple of these because the more icing you get off, when you pick up all of this, like this, you can move to the next one and then there's not a ton of icing on this so you're actually able to uh, frost that next topper very easily because as you keep going this icing it does start to kind of dry and the less icing you have on here the easier it's going to be and the less often you have to clean this scrape this uh stencil yeah there is your dripping honeycomb it's all done at this point we're going to let it dry fully before we try and peel this off and since these are so tiny, it's not going to take more than five minutes. I'm just going to turn on this fan, go clean up, and then we'll peel this off of the plastic. All right, now that this is all the way dry, all my layers are dry, um, I'm going to peel this off. I'm just going to take off this tape that I used to tack down this clear plastic. If you just barely frosted this whole thing in one go, you do want to make sure that you let this dry at least four hours before peeling it off just to guarantee that it is dry because if you peel this off while it's still wet, it's going to break or part of that wet icing is still going to stick to the plastic while the dry part falls off. So you're going to have a lot of issues and then when you go ahead and attach it to your cookie, it's not going to be as sturdy. So you want to make sure that you have a nice dry base. We're gonna take it and we're gonna flip it over and then we're just gonna curl that plastic off the back. 
Usually I'll just let these dry overnight. I'll frost them one day and then the next day I'll peel them off and attach them to cookies. But there is your royal icing transfer. You can see how thin these are. So you're not really adding a ton of really hard royal icing to your cookies. It's just going to add a little bit of a crunch on top. There's your transfer. And then the next video we'll talk about how to attach these to your cookie. We'll talk about drying time and then packaging as well. Thanks for joining me this week.